We can of course go further than just breaking things up into components. We can start actually looking at displacement. So that's another nice quantity to look at. So let's say uh, we look at this example here. You walk five meters north and then you walk 4.0 meters east. What's your distance traveled? And the other question is what's your displacement? Because there's a difference between them. And maybe I'll just use uh, little arrows here and I'll actually try to draw them. So I'll draw myself some nice little arrows. Maybe I'll draw them in green this time. So let's say I want to draw an arrow that represents five meters north. Um, all right, well then let's maybe just draw it right here. So five meters north, this is one arrow. And you can make it whatever arbitrary length you want. Because what you're going to do afterwards, you just label it. You just say, oh, this represents 5.0 meters. See, there it is. Now it's got a length of five meters. It's pretty arbitrary. It sounds really dodgy to do that, but you really can do this. And then I want to draw an arrow that goes four meters east. Okay, so I start here. This is my start point here. This is where I started. Okay, and uh, so I walk this way. I walk five meters north. And after that, I turn to the right because that's what east is. And I draw an arrow then that's five meters, uh, four meters long to the right. So think about this then. If I'm going to draw this next arrow, should I make it as long as the one I just drew? No. Uh, but I'm not exact here. It doesn't even matter how exact you are. Whoops, I should probably draw it in the same color. should probably try to do that. There we go. So here we go. I'm going to try to draw myself an arrow that is four meters long. Now, I don't know exactly how long that is. It's hard to tell, right? It's just got to look shorter than the first one. So I don't know. Something like this. It's not exact science here. Um, and this one here, I'll just label it properly, though. See, now it's labeled right. There we go. In other words, you could say this is not a scale diagram. In other words, don't actually measure things here with angles. Just look at the numbers. So I could say, what's my distance traveled? And distance traveled, that, this is what I want. I want this scalar quantity, distance, which is normally written as S for some reason instead of D. Uh, so I want the distance traveled. It's just the distance that I've walked. So I've draw, walked 5.0 plus 4.0. So 5 plus 4 is just... 9. Now if I'm going to use the right amount of significant figures, I should say 9.0 meters. There we go. I've walked a total of 9 meters. That's my distance traveled. But now I want displacement. Displacement is this with a little arrow on top, right? This is the vector version of distance. Because it's a vector version, I need to have a length of an arrow and the direction that it's pointing. So what's really important here this is maybe a good way to show you about vectors, is that here we're going to draw an arrow uh, that joins. See, this is the start and this is the end. I'm going to try to draw myself an arrow then that goes from the start to the end. So in this case right here, I'm going to draw myself an arrow that goes from here directly to here. So from the start to the end. And this is the arrow I care about. This arrow right here. This is all I care about here. This one right here. This is what I want. This is my vector that represents my displacement. I started here, I finished here, that's my displacement. Another way to see it is this is this is where I am from my start point. In other words, you know, I'd have to point this direction and go this far uh, if I want to, let's say, fly over the air and get to there. You know, so this is this is where I am from my end point. That's what I like to think about displacement. Displacement is where are you from your start point? That's a good way to, to define it. So we can find the length of this arrow and we can find the direction that the arrow is pointing. We may want to define the direction based on an angle here, so maybe we'll call that theta. And this whole triangle here, this right here makes a triangle, and this is a right angle triangle. So because of that, because it's 90 degrees, I can start using my sine, cosine, and tangent if I want. Let's maybe start by just finding the this length right here. Do you remember how to find the length of a side of a triangle that's right angled? I hope you remember the Pythagorean theorem. So we're going to use that. So we're going to say then that, uh, remember, normally it's written as c squared equals a squared plus b squared. Well, in this case, we're going to say that s squared, which is what I'm looking for, s squared, is just going to be equal to, well, 5 squared plus 4 squared. So let's see now, what's 5 squared? Well, 5 uh, squared is 25. 4 squared is 16. That's what s squared is. Well, that means then if I want to find s 
squared, that's going to be 25 plus 16, so that's going to be a 41. And that means if I want s by itself, that means I have to take the square root of that. So that's just square root of 41, which sounds really ugly, but that's what you can do. Now, if you want, and this is the exact answer, you can, of course, bring up your trusty calculator and just say, what's the square root of 41? You can do it. It's 6.40, da, 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 da. But we're using things with one decimal point, so let's keep doing that. So 6.4. So we can say then that my displacement then is 6. 0.4 meters. Great. Am I done? Nope, because displacement is a vector. I need to say a direction here. I'm missing a piece of information here. I need to know the direction. So in order to fill out the direction then, I can maybe use some more trigonometry. I can use some more tricks that I have up my sleeve. That's because I know how to deal with angles. And hopefully you do too. We've just been looking at this in a previous video where we can take this and use our trigonometry tricks. I want to know this value right here. All I know though is the opposite. If I want, I can label these. From this angle here, opposite to that is this one. Up. Um, this one right here is called hype. And this one here then is adjacent. And again, that's because hypotenuse is always the longest one or it's opposite to the 90 degrees one. And then the other one is just called adjacent. So opposite hypotenuse adjacent. I want to find this, uh, sorry, this angle right here. I want to know that angle. In order to know that angle, though, then I can use the two quantities that I for sure know. I could, of course, use anyway. Now that I know this length, I can use any of them. But I'm going to use the ones that I know for sure. I know that opposite is 4. I know that adjacent is 5. So I'm going to try to use one of my trig tricks, the so ka or toa. I'm going to use whichever one has an opposite and adjacent in it, so an O and an A. That's clearly this one. That means then that I know that tan of theta is equal to the opposite over adjacent. That means in this case it's 4 over 5. So because tan theta equals 4 over 5, I can say that theta equals, do you remember how to undo theta? The way we do that algebraically, we do what's called inverse tan. It's a function we have to do here, actually. So it's inverse tangent of 4 over 5. And I'm going to need my calculator for that. So I'm going to say, uh, what's 4 divided by 5? I like to do it this way. Maybe it sounds backwards, but I like to say, what's 4 over 5? And then I like to say, give me the inverse tangent. So remember, I press second tan because I want the little blue on there. Inverse tan. I want the inverse tangent of the answer. Remember the little blue answer there. So inverse tangent of the answer. I could have, of course, just said inverse tangent of 4 over 5, but I just kind of like to do it this way. And it's 38.6 degrees. If I wanted to round it to the nearest degree, I'd say 39 degrees. So I would say then that theta equals 39 degrees. Now the problem is that I need to define this somehow. This is defined as north and then east. So what I could say then, I could say this is, we could actually define it. Sometimes we like to put in little square brackets. We can say north and then you go 39 degrees east. This is one of the ways of defining an angle. You can say, see, first go north, then go 39 degrees east of there. That's one way to do it. Uh, another way to write it, I could also say this. I could do what's called a bearing. Maybe bearings help to explain that. Bearings are things where, um, let's assume you know about compasses, uh, where if I was to define this right here, I was going all the way around a circle here. This here is called north. This is also zero degrees. And if I go to the right like this, as I keep going around here, this right here is 90 degrees. That's a bearing. That's 90 degrees. This one here is, that's east, by the way. Exactly south is 180 degrees. Exactly west is 270. And exactly north, then, is 360. So it turns out if you define a bearing like this, start off at north and go to the right like this as you go around, then you can actually define an absolute value. In this case, because you started north and you went to the right, then you can say this is a bearing of, now we often write it as a three-digit number, so we can say 0, 3, 9 degrees. This is, you know, this is a bearing of 39 degrees. That means, you know, you go 39 degrees, that means you're heading east here. So this is another way of writing it. If it had been something that was, I don't know, um, exactly west, then I would have said, well, I could just say west, but I could also say a bearing of 270. That's often how we write a bearing like this.
So we could say 270. Of course, this is not the case here. In this case, it's either north 39 degrees east, or you can say just 39 degrees. If you're into flying, for example, in airplanes, then we often use bearings like this. So you're often told, even by the control tower, you know, head uh, direction of uh, 0 to 9 -er. What that means is head towards 0 to 9. Oh, that means 29 degrees. Hey, that means I'm heading kind of north and east, but more north than east, because I'm only 29 degrees. Uh, just like if you're told, head a bearing of 180. Oh, I know, that means I'm heading straight south. So see how bearings are actually pretty useful as well.